Binding over binging. Who needs Netflix when you have Swift? Optional <laughs> optional binding is a useful pattern that we can use to detect whether an optional contains value. If there is a value, then we can assign it to a temporary constant or a variable and make it available within a conditional's first branch of execution. This can make our lives so much easier and our code more concise while retaining its expressive nature. And it's pretty amazing. Just to run through the basic syntax, it's like, if you let a temporary constant, then we're gonna do something with this temporary constant, else there wasn't a value in an optional, AKA an optional is nil. Let's fix up our first example, this guy, and give it some cosmetics. Let's make it, let's, let's make it beautiful. So let's do, this is fine, this is fine. Let's get rid of all of it, just kidding. Let's do if let room number equal class room string, and then we're gonna print the bad boy. What a beaut. You guys are smart. We can see that the syntax for optional binding is more or less the same as the syntax using a constant used within a conditional. The constant room number just moved up to the top, you know? It just made its way to the first line. It's out here grinding, making its way to the top, baby. And this makes room number a temporary constant that is available within the first branch of the conditional, right here. If there is a value within the optional, a temporary constant is made available for use in the block of code that is executed if the condition is true. Furthermore, check, 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 check it out. We no longer forcibly unwrap the optional. If the conversion is successful, then this operation is done for us and the optional's value is made available in the temporary constant we declared. Lastly, we could have declared the room number with the var keyword if we wanted to manipulate the value inside the first branch of the conditional. We could have written var, it's whatever, you know. It's no big deal, it's what else. Let's play pretend again, which seems like we do a lot and if you think about it, it's kind of weird because I'm a grown man, but let's say we wanted to convert the classroom string to its corresponding integer representation. We can do that by nesting some if let bindings. Bet you never thought you'd hear that sentence. <laughs> so we can do an if let classroom integer equal to int room. This is the conversion. You've seen this before. <laughs> I'm just gonna delete this guy. Forget about him. You can print. Blessed. Blessings from the most high. Check out this second if let right here. That's nice. The second if let takes place in the first one, making the room number available to use in the second optional binding. Oh, what a beauty. And we just converted between integer types. That's pretty cool. We used int room number here, this method, to convert the string instance of room number to its corresponding integer. But you gotta keep in mind though, this operation can fail. When would it fail? The string classroom doesn't naturally translate to an integer. Do you know what I'm saying? Like this is string 303, you know, it's evident that there probably should be a corresponding integer. Therefore, this, this int guy returns an optional in case a corresponding int isn't found for a given string. The result of this guy is unwrapped and assigned to the classroom integer in the second binding, which makes the integer value available for use. We can use both of these new constants in a call to print here, and we can just print them to the console. Nesting optionals can get a little dicey, a little out of hand, not in your feet, you know? It's not too bad with just a couple of optionals, but you can see the strategy can get pretty complicated if we just chucked in several more optionals that needed to be unwrapped in there. Deeply nested optional bindings is basically just digging yourself deeper and deeper. So soon, you'll never be able to get out. Poles are cool when they're only like three feet deep and you can hop out of it. Shout out to Shia LaBeouf. Do it! Just do it! Luckily though, there is a strategy that, that defeats this. We can unwrap multiple optionals in a single line, in a single if let binding if we wanted to, and that helps us avoid the need for nesting multiple if let calls, which can be nasty little boogers. But we'll see how to unwrap multiple optionals in the next video. I love you guys and I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe, okay, bye.